Hey, everybody. Um, we're excited to host this first code along in our series for the year. And today we'll be using make code micro bit, um, the interface, and we'll be exploring some block coding on the simulator. And we'll try and show you some right on the micro bit as well. So we have myself, Craig, Lexi, and Chris here from Learn Quebec today. Um, just a bit of housekeeping or a background. So the Learn AC, you see the logos on the, the slide there. You see a Learn logo and you see a AC logo. And just for clarification, Learn is a nonprofit uh, organization working with the English School Boards of Quebec. And we also fall under the AC network. That's the other logo that you see there. Um, réseau or network of collaboration, innovation, and technology. And the AC is better known in the French sector, probably, but uh, Learn supports the provincial Anglophone community under that same umbrella of the AC. All right, so the purpose of today, we did a code along uh, last year with Scratch and it was really well received. So we're gonna repeat it here today with the micro bit. Um, it's a, it's kind of like reverse engineering where we start at the end uh, to experience a tool or an interface or an application. Um, and that way we limit all the preamble stuff, learning about the tool and stuff like that. We just jump right in. Um, and typically things get addressed organically as we do the coding together. So you're going to follow along, code along with us. We'll show you and you will do uh, what we're doing. And your job pretty much is to follow along and then make curric curricular connections um, and personal links to your own classes and your settings with your students. Okay, so I have here a single micro bit and when I open up the box, I have three important things. So I have the battery pack, USB wire, and the micro bit itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my micro bit out of this protective sleeve. And here's the micro bit, essentially. You can take a look quickly on the back and see V1 or V2. That indicates if it's a version 1 or version 2. Version 2 micro bits do have a few more features than the V1. And you can learn more about the differences between V1 and V2 in some of our resources online. So basically though, um, any micro bit is going to have the A button, B button, this LED matrix here where we can light up all these individual LEDs. We have some pins down at the bottom. We can plug in alligator wires to connect peripherals. On the back, you can see some of the sensors. We also have a, uh, right here in the center, a reset button. And then you can see the USB port and the place to plug in the battery. So when I have coded my program and I'm ready to load that onto my micro bit, I need to connect my micro bit to the computer and I do that with the USB wire. So it's just a matter of plugging it in and plugging this end into your computer. And once it's connected, you can go ahead and download your code onto the uh, micro bit. When it's plugged into the computer, it's getting its power from the computer. And so while it's plugged into the computer, you can, you know, go ahead and use it with whatever code you've programmed. But what's great about the micro bit is we can make it portable. So I can do that using the battery pack. So I can go ahead and unplug from my computer. And with the battery pack, it gets its power. You can see now the red light has lit up. So I can go ahead now and move around the school, go outside, whatever, whatever is required of me. Um, and you can see that it is going to work even when it's not plugged into the computer. If I want to go ahead and load more code onto the, the micro bit and, and, you know, change whatever code program I have on it, I can still keep the battery pack plugged in and go ahead and plug that back into my computer just like that and download the code. So I don't need to take the battery pack out every time. That's the micro bit. All right, so today we're gonna go through three different coding activities with you. Um, this is a very kind of basic introductory, you know, um, exploration into um, micro bit and make code. So I'll start you off. We'll be creating, we'll use the word string elements and we'll also play with the um, little LED matrix on the micro bit. And then Craig will come back and show you um, some more, a little bit more uh, adventurous coding there. So 
to get started in um, make code and micro bit, the first thing we want to do is navigate to make code. So makecode.microbit.org. And once you are here, um, we can go ahead. You can see I have several projects already started, but typically we want to go ahead and open up a new project and you can give it a name. So you can title it whatever is appropriate for your project. And here we have our interface for MakeCode. You can see on the left, we have a simulator. Uh, it looks like the micro bit. And we can use this to test our code before taking the code and loading it to the actual um, micro bit if you have it. And it's also great if you don't have a micro bit, um, you can still you know, test the code, play with the code um, in the simulator. And then on the right-hand side is we have our you know, our work area where we will drag the code and uh, create our programming. So it's pretty, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. It's similar to any other um, block coding languages. If you've used Scratch before, you'll recognize very similar uh, types of blocks. So we will go ahead and get started our first activity is to create uh, using the word string. So you can see in my work area, I have a couple of blocks here. I don't want to use these ones for the first thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just click and drag them. And you can see my little trash can appears. And I want to do a different input. So the micro bit has uh, some buttons on it that we can use and we press the button and make something happen. So I can go into my input and grab that block there. So when I press button A, what do I want to happen? We're going to use the word string to start. So again, you can be following along as I do this. So we've grabbed that first input. And now I want to go ahead in basic and grab show string and plop that in right there. And it's just drag and drop, really easy. Right now it comes automatically saying hello, but we can easily change that. And you can go ahead and customize it to whatever you want it to say. And now that I have just that basic code there, I can go in my simulator again on the left-hand side and we have button A, so I'm going to press the button A. And you see it's going to show that string of words that I typed in there. If I wanted, I could go ahead and make it say something different when I press button B. Now you'll notice that this one right now, it's kind of grayed out um, because it's showing button A and button A and I can't have it do two different things with that same input. So once I change it to B, it will show back up pink and indicate that it's ready um, and functional. So I can go ahead and put in, maybe I wanna, you know, introduce myself. And now in my simulator, if I press A, it will show that welcome. If I press B, it will show that other string of text. So again, you can customize this to say whatever it is you want to say today. And then our next code is going to be to make a little dancing figure. And we're going to use the LED matrix on the micro bit. So uh, I could always open a new project. Um, but for now, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and remove this code. And we're going to start start over fresh. Again, if you want to create a, a new project, um, you could go to home, create a new project, give it a new name, and, and so forth. Um, 
So um, let's say, I mean, it, it's really up to you how you want to um, start. You could pick the on button pressed or like we had at the beginning, we could pick the on start or even forever. And so it's just a, a matter of what, what do you want to be the event that triggers your code to happen? So I'll stick with that button A press. And this time I wanna use those little LEDs. So on the micro bit, you can kind of see there's, it's five by five. So there's 25 total little red LEDs I can light up. And so I can go ahead and drag in this matrix here. And right now, if I press A, nothing's gonna happen, but I could go ahead and highlight some of the blocks and you can just click them to make them light up. And so when now when I press A, it will show that design. But we want to make a little dancing figure. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another um, block here. I'm going to make, let's see, something to do so you can design it however you want to make your little dancing figure it doesn't have to be a figure it could be another um uh animation <laughs> um and and we can add it into a, a loop here so i'm actually going to put it into this loop and drag that in here um so now i have it repeat four times so let's just go ahead and see what what that does so if i press a it's going to alternate in in that um, between those two little figures four times. And again, here you can anytime you have these bubbles, you can edit that to be you know whatever number you want. And so it'll you know keep going. So sometimes people will create um, other little images, something like maybe a heart that's kind of growing. Maybe it starts from here. And we'll get it a little bit bigger. And you can add in another one if you want. Or you can even see they've already created a heart. So I can grab, go ahead and do that. And let's see how, if that works. So there you go. You've got two um, different, very basic activities you can do with Microbit. That first one was the word string. And then we've got this little kind of animation using the LEDs. I'm going to hand it off to Craig to show you the next part. And there you go. So um, like you did before, you could start a new project and give it a name. I'm going to jump into um, a few more blocks, more than what Lexi just showed you. So some logic and a bit of math to, to build on that a little bit. Um, so I'm going to select this um, project right here, this coin toss. Um, but you folks can click on new project and start from scratch. And I'll show you why I open that. So we talked about reverse engineering. So there's the code already done. Let's work backwards to give you a sense of what that looks like. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And what we're going to try and simulate here is flipping a coin, right? So great for probability in your math class. Um, you've, you'll, you're going to create a tool that will allow you to do the coin toss over and over and over again, and it'll randomly give you heads or tails each time. And so what I'm going to do for this one is grab an input block, this pink right in here, and on button A pressed, I'm going to drag that over there. And you notice that this stuff over here grayed out, right? Because we have two identical commands right on the same canvas here, push button A and push button A twice. Um, so I'm gonna leave this and maybe I can show you that. If I were to choose a different button for B, you saw the color arrive back from my button A. So 
I'll go back to button A because that's what I'm going to do. Um, so the, what I'm going to do is use a, a bit of logic here. So I'm going to go down to these turquoise colors here, and I'm going to pull that onto my canvas. I'll put it in there. So if something is true, so if it is heads, um, we're going to show a symbol. So I'm just going to grab from the basic blocks show icon, and I'm just going to use a check mark for heads, um, and we'll use an X for tails or something like that. So there you go. I have my check mark for for that. If button A is pressed and it is true, um, that's the icon that's going to show. I'm also going to go into the basic blocks and take another icon. I'll put it in there right away. And we'll use the X, like I said. So we have a heads or tails if button A is pressed, but we need to do something a bit um, deeper here. So we're going to use a math block. And you can see here, pick random, true or false. It's not colored, but you'll see it in a sec. So in this little area here where something is true, I can actually get a block to give it a, a choice. So I'm going to go into the purple blocks in math. And down here, you see pick random, true or false. So that's going to randomize my selection for me. So I'll just drag that over. And where you see true over here, when I drag this block over, you can see a red dot appear. And wherever I drag it over something where it'll actually be dropped in, um, usually you'll see a red connector appear. There you go. So I, I can see that it'll fit in here because the dot's indicating that. So I drop it in. There we go. So if I press A, it's going to pick at random, um, true or false. And this little plus sign in the log, the logic piece here. So if it's not true, obviously it's going to be false by default. So I don't have to make it more complicated than that. I'll click on the plus button here. And you get an else comment there. So if it's true, we're going to show the check mark. If it's false or else, we're going to show the X right there. Um, and I think that's it as far as the program goes. We can see it matches over here. I'm going to press play in my simulator. And remember, we chose button A to launch this program. So I'm going to click on button A in the simulator. And there we go. We get a check mark. So that, that would be heads, the equivalent of heads, or the X is tails, and so on. So if I keep clicking, I got tails again, heads, heads again, heads again, heads again a lot of heads and finally so it is randomized I, it's completely out of my control which is what we want when we're doing probability so there's your program for flipping a coin and again you can make the image however you wish to represent that um, hopefully you can reproduce this code and experience the same thing i just want to show you how i put this on to the micro bit um, now and so a few things we we need to remember is the, the code that I just created is going to save onto the computer. So if somebody else is using the same computer as um, if two students are sharing it and so on, um, they won't be able to retrieve their code unless they go on the same computer as the previous time. So what we like to do is the save button right here. And I'm going to go back actually before I do the save piece. I'm going to show you how to save the code. So these little um, dots up here, these three balls, I'll click on. Um, it, there's the title of the project that I have. I'm going to share the project. Click on share. And there's the code we were talking about. So um, we have documentation to show you how to share this code. We've created a, a blank table. Um, and it's good practice for you and your students to have a table like that so that you can collect all the code so that the next day when you come back to this, if you're not on the same computer as the previous time, you'll be able to retrieve the code. Um, so I can copy this or just click on copy. It's copied to my clipboard and then I would paste it on a document that we'll, we'll share later, I suppose. Um, so back to actually flashing this thing or downloading it onto the micro bit. Here's how we do it. I had clicked on save before. We'll do it this time for real. I click on save. 
And I'm just going to say done. I'm going to show you the old school way to do it. I click on done. And my code has gone into my finder. So if I open my finder, I have it on another screen. I'm going to drag it over here. Hopefully you could see it. Once I plug in my micro bit, and I'm doing that now, maybe I should let you have a look. Aha, here. So there's my micro bit. I've plugged it in to the USB. It's all ready to go. I have not put the battery in yet, but there's the battery pack. What I'm going to do is plug the USB into my computer. And this is actually a dongle that's extended to my computer. You can't see it. but So I take the USB, and it's plug and play. Once I plug it in, you see the lights flash. And then in my finder on my shared screen over here, you see it appear right here. You can see microbit with a little carrot next to it to eject it. So now I've plugged it in kind of like any USB device. It's plugged in. And remember, we clicked on save to download the code that I just created. Well, then I have to look on my computer. I can go into my downloads. And right up here is that code that I just downloaded for the, uh, the coin toss. So it's literally a drag and drop. I just take this drag the program over to the micro bit. You see the plus sign up here and I drop it. It'll be spinning. The lights are flashing on the micro bit and then it's gonna tell me when it's done. It's saying copying right now in the pop-up. And there we go, it's done. I have an indication that it's done. So remember our code was to press A. If we look at the micro bit itself here, the program should be on it. So if I press A, there's our X, the heads or tails. So just like on the simulator, each time I press A, it's randomizing a selection. And so my micro bit is functional. functional. And then I could unplug it. Um, I'm going to leave it in because I don't want to eject it. And then I can put my battery pack connected to it. And the micro bit is um, free traveling at that point, right? I could put it in my pocket and walk around with it, or I have a tool to do randomization. Um, to do probability. Um, so I'll leave that there for now. So back to the shared screen here, um, just an, another step that speeds up the process. So you saw me drag and drop from, I had to go find it in the finder. I dragged and dropped it onto the device. That's great if you have no other alternative, but a faster way is again, to click on the save button. So I'm coming back to my program here. I click on save. This pop-up happened. And what we didn't do before is click on this pair now, this purple button right here. So what I'll do is say pair now. It wants me to connect the device to my computer. It's already done. It should be plugged in. I click on next. And then I'll download directly to the micro bit. And you see the strip going across the scrub bar, it is now downloaded to the, the micro bit. So any future program that I create, I can then click on download. And when I do, you see what's happening, it's going directly to the micro bit. So I saved a step. <clears throat> okay, so let's try another one. So that's um, for two choices. I'm just going to mute myself for a second. There we go. So let's try another one. So that was for two choices, right? Heads or tails. It's I randomized one selection by default, the second selection just turns up. So we could do the same thing for three choices um, or, or more, right? So three choices, we'll do a rock, paper, scissors one. Uh, um, and then a, uh, you can go further with dice, right? You can make a, a die, a six-sided die. You would have six choices, and then it's possible to do eight, those magic eight balls. You can do that kind of stuff. So I'll show you for three choices. Um, so I'll show you for three choices, and then you'll be able to expand that to four, six, and eight as needed. So again, I'm going to go back to Microbit. I'm going to go right into my rock, paper, and scissor program. There we go. A little bit more complicated. I'm going to drag it over like we did before. Remember, it's reverse engineering. So you get the whole program up front, and then we'll work backwards. So 
input. This one's on shake. So I'm going to go to the pink inputs. There's the on shake block. On shake. Um, and so if you are familiar with rock, paper, scissors, usually there's a shoot feature, right? We say one, two, three, shoot, and then you have the rock, paper, scissors. So I'm going to create a variable um, down here, these red folks. And mine's already there. I created it. So all I did was go into make a variable. So when you folks go in, it's going to be blank. There will be no variables in there just yet. I clicked on make a variable. I made the variable. I'll say shoot two just to show you the example. I click OK. And you can see now I have two variables in there. The first one called shoot. The second one shoot two just to give you a sense of what it looks like. So the first thing I want to do on shake um, I want to set the déclencheur, the initiator for what's, when this is going to happen. So when I shake the micro bit, um, the, the shoot is going to happen, and then it'll randomize those three pieces for me. So I'm going to grab that block. I'm going to drag it in on shake. I'm going to shoot. Um, and now I need to pick at random again, like before. So remember the math blocks? We went in the math blocks and we went down, pick random, true or false. In this occasion, we're going to go up here to pick random 0 through 10. So you can actually scramble 10 different probable choices. So I'm going to drag that one. And where this 0 is, I'm going to throw that in there. That's going to be my randomizer. So what am I doing? When I shoot, when I say shoot, I want you to randomly choose a number for me. And in this case, it's between zero and 10. I'm gonna pop that in there like we did before. You see the red dots appear. And because rock, paper, scissors has three choices, I'm gonna randomize it between one and three. Um, there we go. And I call this shoot two. Let's call it shoot one, just cause I don't like the look of it. So there we go. On shake, when I shoot this thing, it's gonna randomly pick between uh, the numbers of one and three, one being rock, two being scissors, and three being paper, whatever it happens to be. So back to our logic, like before, because if there's going to be an if-then statement, so I'm going to put that in after the shoot is already set to randomize, and then we're going to do like we did before. Um, we're going to use an image, and there's some images in here, the icons. You can find something that looks like a rock or a paper or scissors, or you can draw it out on the LEDs like Lexi did before. Um, so I'm just going to take this icon. If it's true, we'll use that as a rock. The diamond's going to be a rock. And this little plus sign right here will allow us to create that a second time. So I'm going to open that one up. So if it's true, show the rock, or else show paper. So again, I'm going to just drag a basic block. I'm going to go to the icons, drop that in there, open this up, and let's use this for paper, rock, paper. And then one more time, I'm going to click on the plus sign because this is our third choice coming up. Whoops, that shifted on me. Um, so the last else is going to be for scissors. And I think there's actually scissors in the basic blocks show icon. I'll pop that in down here. They those kind of look like scissors. You could always draw them yourself. So now we see three events happening should be randomized, um, but we're going to indicate when that happens. So, so it is actually the logic that we want to grab. Um, the logic you'll see, it's that diagonal uh, yes. that comparison. The and the diagonal okay. block will fit in that diagonal spot. There you yeah. go. Okay, so and we will we could do that three times, but I'll walk through it completely. This is going to be on number one, right? If it randomly chooses number one, um, but we need to put the variable in this spot. So where it says zero, we'll go down the variables, and there's our shoot variable. So when I shoot, and it equals one the randomization, then I want to show this icon, the rock. Um, so we'll do the same thing for this diamond. We'll do the, the similar thing. And again, I can go into logic, grab this one. I can go into the variable, grab this one. But just a quick um, shortcut for you. When I click on this uh, symbol, you see I got yellow around it. Just like if I click on this symbol, it gets yellow all around it. So I click on this. 
the yellow area I'd like to duplicate, I right click and I get, I should get a pop-up. There you go, right click and I do duplicate. And there it is, it's already done for me. So we know we're gonna need it a second time on the shoot, this time if it equals two, randomly that one turns up, then it's gonna show us the, the paper. And then for the scissor one, again, the else will give us the other one by default. I mean, we could put in number three if we wanted in, in there, but by default, if it's not one and two, and we only gave it three choices to randomize, it's gonna go to, to number, number three. All right, so th that's what it looks like. I will press play over here. We could test it on the simulator. I think my code is complete. And the shake button here, kind of like the A button and the B button, I can just click on it to simulate a shake. So there we go, we got scissors. So one, two, three, shoot. Click on shake, we got scissors again. One, two, three, shoot. I'll click a few shakes, there we go, rock. Scissors, rock again paper and so on. So we're getting the randomization that we're looking for. Um, the simulator is working, our code looks good. And like we did before, we're gonna flash this over to the micro bit. And I still have my camera over here. So you can see the micro bit before. It still has the check mark from our heads and tails from before, I'll leave that there, it's plugged in. And because we paired it before, clicking on download should now send the new program to my micro bit. It'll flash a little bit, it'll let me know it's there. And so now on shake, we should get rock, paper, scissors, and I'll flick it to, there we go, rock, scissors. One, two, three, shoot, rock. One, two, three, shoot, rock again. One, two, three, shoot, and shoot, and shoot. And it might not be responding on here. I'm going to actually, kick it out, plug in the battery just to show you what that looks like. So I'm on my screen, go to the micro bit in my finder. I will eject it, give it a chance to eject. And it's gonna power off obviously because it was using the power from the computer. I will then plug in the battery pack. There you go. And the light comes back on and this might be a better way to simulate the shake. Shake, rock, one, two, three, shoot. Scissors, one, two, three, shoot. Scissors again, shoot, rock, shoot, paper, and so on. So there it is, it's your pocket device right now for doing probability, right? You can go out and do uh, rock, paper, scissors, probability data collection. Um, you could turn it into a die for six-sided six -sided, uh, choices again, and then the magic eight ball as well you could have. So I'll put it back to, well, maybe I'll keep sharing, but I will take my camera back. There we go, we're back. And we'll go back to the presentation. So here are a few resources to bookmark for future reference. Of course, there's the makecode.microbit.org, the interface, which you've been exploring during this webinar. Um, there's two great visual resources here. Um, it'll help you get to know the microbit physical features. One's an annotated poster, and the other one is a detailed overview. Both of these resources have clickable items for deeper understanding of what the microbit contains and what it can do. And last on this page, is the program tracker referred to in our code along today. You can make a copy of that and adapt the column headings to reflect your class. Just remember, you're gonna need a way to capture all the codes you create so you can retrieve them again later. It's also a great way to organize all the work done by students in one easy page. And students will be able to view codes done by others without being able to damage the original code. These resources will help you go beyond today's code along. The Microbits unit resource is a self-paced online course covering all things Microbit, and I'll come back to this one later. This Microbit program table provides a visual aid to see how to physically assemble the Microbit for a given program. I'll have a quick look at that. 
the microbit challenges program uh, challenges padlet i'm sorry uh, is a compilation of activities and projects you can try using the microbit that one is here and the padlet's completely bilingual and it's organized by beginner intermediate and advanced tasks and the last item on the right is a Padlet for connecting your class projects to United Nations Sustainable Development Goals with the microbit. There's the Padlet, um, and it, it's called Do Your Bit. I'll show you the site as well. So it's called Do Your Bit. And remember, the microbit's a great little tool for collecting data, right? Um, but the added engagement comes from using it in authentic learning situations. So the, the 17 sustainable development goals can help you make those connections. And there's everything from climate action to life underwater, life on land, and so on. Um, and there's something for everyone, a perfect way to bring deeper meaning to learning with the microbit. I'll just scroll through a little bit. You can see some of the projects that are there, and it's a, really a step-by-step -step for teachers and classes, there's lessons in there as well. Now let's go back to the online course, this piece right here, and I'll open the online course. So the, the microbit heading right there is gonna introduce the microbit. I think we've pretty much done that with the code along today. Um, the course units headings, that one there has eight units running from beginner to more advanced. Um, and we pretty much did unit one today in the code along. And finally, there's the teacher resource page, that one right there. And we were already on the teacher resource page. In fact, you can locate additional support uh, resources, including the, the two that I showed on the slide before. One of them was the what is the finished code for units of the online course? This one's the program table we just saw. That one's right here. And the other one was the Padlet we looked at, right, with the challenges for beginners, intermediate, and advanced, and so on. Sure. So we just wanted to go ahead and share with you our uh, next Code Along act, um, events. So we have coming up on November 14th, uh, Makey Makey, and so coding with the Makey Makey. And on December 5th, we'll get into Turtle Art. So Turtle Art, again, using block coding, um, this time to create kind of works of art. And then the next one will be in the new year, uh, January 9th, we'll uh, go into Scratch and Scratch Junior. And I think that's all. So thank you for joining us on our uh, micro bit and make code code along, and we hope to see you in the future.